guys and gals. We're going to talk about desulfators today. And this is what a desulfator looks like. And this is actually a uh, system that's in the process of being installed, so everything isn't finalized yet. And I just wanted to show you what it looks like and how it hooks in, and then we'll talk about what it's used for, why you might want one. This particular model is made by Battery Lifesaver. They're my favorite desulfator, really the only one that I'll use. And this particular model is the 2436 Multi-F. 2436 means that it can be used for 24 or 36 volts uh, battery banks, and the Multi-F is for larger battery banks, like over a thousand amp hours, which this one is. That light over there lets you know that the unit is on and operational, and these dissipate heat. It can get a little bit warm sometimes, but it's not right now. And then there's two wires running down to the battery. Let's see if we can get a look at them. So the one with the... they're both red, but one has a black stripe, and it's going to tap into... Uh, it's going to tap into the negative terminal on your battery bank. When I say the negative terminal, I'm talking the main negative terminal where your inverter or power center taps into the battery bank negative. Uh, because with this battery bank, you know, there's a bunch of cells that are connecting together, and that's typically what you're going to find with a battery bank. Um, so the main negative there and the, the main positive that's going out to the inverter or power center is where the other, the positive wire for the battery lifesaver taps in. And you can, a lot of times these will come with alligator clips that clip on there, but I like them with eyelets, and you can generally specify that when you're ordering the battery lifesaver in the order process. It makes it much easier to tap in, you know, you just bolt it on the same bolt there if it has an eyelet. So anyhow, let's hop on the computer <clears throat> and take a quick look at the desulfators that are available and what you might use them for, what they're good for, and that sort of thing. So the website for Battery Lifesaver is batterylifesaver.com. There's a lot of good info on here if you're curious about how it works and all that sort of thing. Just click on the About Us page or the About page and it will give you a quick discussion of what a desulfator is and how it works or you can get a much more technical version of it by clicking down there on the full version link and it will go through all about this. I'm not going to go into all the technical aspects of how a lead acid battery works and all that sort of thing. I'm just going to try and give you a quick Reader's Digest version of this. So basically with a lead acid battery you've got a chemical reaction happening. You've got lead plates that are in a bath of sulfuric acid inside the the battery. And so there's a chemical reaction going on where uh, when the battery is being charged up and a different reaction when it's being discharged. And, uh, and so lead from those lead plates is being converted into other uh, substances as it's being discharged and then being put back onto the lead plates as it's being charged, uh, for lack of a better word. I know I'm probably slaughtering this from a uh, scientific technical standpoint, but just just try and, and uh, stick with me here. The point is that what what sometimes happens with a battery that is becoming unhealthy is the uh, the lead um, particles that are supposed to be able to convert back and forth, they will turn into a crystal, where it is a uh, lead sulfate crystal. And once it's into a crystal form, it cannot convert back and forth. It stays there, and so it becomes unusable, and you start losing the capacity of that battery, the available capacity that's that's in that battery. And so what the battery lifesaver does is that they say to think of it as kind of like a radio transmitter that is transmitting into your battery. And uh, if you're from a generation or two ago, you'll recall the old um, crystal radio sets where the, the crystal was able to receive uh, radio signals and you could actually make a little radio receiver to receive radio signals from radio stations. And so the, the battery lifesaver is kind of like the transmitter that the radio station transmitter that's transmitting to those lead sulfate crystals and energizing them and hopefully uh, you might say breaking them up or dissolving them where, where they are 
able to get out of that crystal form and back into the the form that they need to be to be able to to change states back and forth as they're being charged and discharged. So another way of thinking of it that kind of works for me is uh, when you think of um, corrosion on metal and just just think of of uh, these sulfate crystals as being like corrosion building up on the metal and you need to remove that corrosion so that you can get down to the bare metal and be able to make a good electrical connection there so um, that's how just a, a nutshell of how the battery lifesaver works and I've found it to to be effective in uh, in extending the life of batteries I've heard other first-hand accounts some friends and others that I don't know uh, of amazing accounts of even to a certain extent rejuvenating old batteries that have sulfated. Some people dispute that um, that a, a, a desulfator can actually uh, rejuvenate a heavily sulfated battery. Some people will dispute that but I believe from based upon first-hand accounts I believe it is possible at least with the battery lifesaver. <clears throat> You'll see a bunch of cheap knockoffs that are that call themselves desulfators and with those it may be very true uh, that they are not able to rejuvenate batteries you're gonna probably pay more with the battery lifesaver but I've found them to work well so they are the only desulfator that I use so uh, which is the model that you're gonna wanna go with <clears throat> well they make quite a variety of options first is going to be the voltage of your battery bank so obviously if it's a 48 volt battery bank then you're going to want to go with one that has 48 in the number and if it's a 24 volt battery bank then you're going to want to go with one that has 24 in the number and some of them can operate in more than one voltage range like this particular one can do a 24 or a 36 volt system and uh, with off-grid power systems as you're probably aware there's three main varieties there's 12 volts 24 volts and 48 volts so don't be distracted by all these other voltages that's for other battery systems for other other applications like you know there's uh, some forklifts that run on 36 volts and I don't know what runs on 144 or 156 but it's, oh, it says it's for electric vehicles um, so you know there's there's a variety of options out there but you're gonna wanna choose the one that's the right voltage and then you may find more than one option for your particular voltage in this case the 2436 multi F is the high powered or heavy duty version that's made for large battery banks and what the owner told me is that this is the one that you want to use if your battery bank is 1000 amp hours or larger then this would be the better option he said that the the uh, low, the what shall I call it, smaller or less powerful uh, version would actually work. It would work for a larger battery bank, but it won't last as long. Evidently, maybe it will overheat more. This is a larger unit. There's more heat dissipation, I guess, and it will do probably a better job with the desulfating. So this is the route that I've gone with our battery bank because it is over a thousand amp hours. If you're if you were under a thousand amp hours, then the one you would want for a 24 volt battery bank would be uh, this one right here, the 1224, the BLS 1224 B or C. I actually like the mo the models with um, uh, eyelets rather than alligator clips. Alligator clips and they they can work fine, but I just like being able to make a really good connection and bolt it onto the terminal of the battery itself. So uh, that's the route that I would go. And so we actually went with this one. And he doesn't show an option for the eyelets right now at this time, but he told me that when you check out, if you just put in the comments, there's a section on the order form where you can type in comments and just request him to do it with eyelets instead of alligator clips and he'll do that no charge no extra charge and so that would be 1224 or if you have a 48 volt battery bank this would be for a large 48 volt battery bank that's over a thousand amp hours or uh, for a smaller one let's see where did we go with the smaller one here it is uh, for less than a thousand amp hours the BLS 48A would be your best option. There's other options out there, but that's going to be the the best route to go. And um, so then, where do you actually buy the thing? You can find some of the smaller versions, like the BLS 48A, <clears throat> or the let's see, where is it? The 20, the 1224B or C. You can find those sometimes at off-grid retailers. 
but you don't I, I haven't found hardly any places that carry the larger ones like the multi F and so if you want to order straight from the company where you can order any of the options then uh, he it's he doesn't make it very easy to get to his uh, order site I think because he's trying he has a lot of dealers out there and he wants to send customers to the dealers but um, to so I don't know how to tell you to navigate to his ordering website from batterylifesaver.com so I'm just going to give you the URL it's batterysolver.com b-a-t-t-e-r-y-s-o-l-v-e-r.com and then you can just click on battery lifesaver and then this shows you all of the different options and you can order them you'll see that the uh, the heavy duty one like the industrial that's the multi f it's a lot more expensive than the almost twice as expensive as the smaller one like the uh, 1224 um let's see what is it 1224b i believe it is bls 1224b yes that's 129.95 versus 209 and so, you know, he told me if I wanted to go with the smaller one, I could, and it would work. But he said after four or five years, it might burn out, it might die. So I chose to go ahead and spend a little more money and get one that's built for the job. And like I say, you can find cheaper desulfators, but honestly, I think you're wasting your money to a certain extent. Now, one other uh, consideration to bear in mind with desulfators is that some battery manufacturers do not like them. For instance, Trojan. This is on the Trojan website and Trojan and you can do a search and for desulfators there's a question and answer do you recommend the use of desulfators we don't recommend the use of desulfators or any other external device as they tend to do more harm than good no external device or chemicals need to be added to our products only distilled water and so if you have a new bank of Trojan batteries that are still under warranty then you're gonna have a, a hard decision to make based upon my past experience with desulfators I would absolutely go ahead and put one on from the get-go but uh, in a professional capacity I would have to recommend to you that if it was going to void, void your warranty you probably wouldn't want to do that you would probably want to wait until after the warranty has expired to uh, to put on a desulfator so that's that's a decision that you're going to have to make other companies don't uh, don't mind desulfators in fact uh, GB industrial battery that makes uh, my favorite forklift batteries I've talked to the owner there and he actually recommends desulfators and he says that for a desulfator to work you need to put it on right away if he says that if you wait until the battery is heavily desulfated it's probably not going to be able to get rid of that sulfation and so here he recommends using it from the get-go so you're gonna have to look at your particular battery manufacturer but just be aware of, of those kind of issues and honestly I have no idea why Trojan makes this kind of uh, an issue over desulfators unless they're talking about some of the cheap ones uh, I don't know um, you know the the manufacturer the owner of the of battery lifesaver he indicated that uh, he, you know, I, I think I asked him why some battery makers don't don't like desulfators, and he indicated that you know what do they have to gain from your batteries lasting longer? If your batteries sulfate and um, become unusable more quickly, then you've got to buy a new bank of batteries sooner, and so they stand to gain. I think that was, if I recall right, that was his take on it. But, um, you know, you, you'll have to make your own choice on it. But my recommendation is that desulfators are a really good idea, and this is the, this is the brand that I would go with.